welcome to this weekend's edition of Taking Stock. This is the show where we take stock of the week gone by and we prepare you for the next trading week. I'm Sonia Shanoi and with me, as always, is Anut Singhal. It's been a good week for the bulls actually. The Nifty consolidated with an upward bias this week. So a gain of about half or percent hung on to that 7900 mark. And the good part about the week was that there was plenty of positive triggers. On one hand, we saw global commodity prices pick up. So metals, PSU banks, etc. moved up. And then we had good earnings from the likes of Reliance, HDFC Bank, Indicent Bank and Infosys. Anuj, the going has been pretty good for the market. It has been, uh, Sonia. And I think, uh, as you pointed out, it's a global beast right now. You know, you've got to track the global fund flows. Uh, this market will dance to the tunes of what's happening with the emerging market fund flows. And we would be part of that. If, if that picture reverses, the market will fall. Make no mistake about that. If that does not happen, with a minor bump, maybe at 79,58,000, the Nifty will move on uh, and, you know, carry along. Uh, yes, the numbers have been quite okay so far, but the real test of the numbers normally is in the second half uh, yeah. when we have the likes of Metals, the PSU yes. banks, uh, even the ICICI banks, those kind of numbers come out. So far, what you've seen is the easier lot. Infosys, I see, you know, HDFC Bank, Indescent Bank, Reliance. You were never expecting bad numbers from these companies. Any Anyway, yeah. so let's see the second half of earnings season. But for me, the, the talking point this week was the Bank Nifty, which was up 2.7%. I think traders made a lot of money in Bank Nifty this week. Uh, Nifty consolidated because it was closer to a big resistance mark of 17 and 50, and it's making heavy meal of that. There was no such problem for the Bank Nifty, and that moved on to its 200-day moving average. Next week, it could be different. Next week, for the Bank Nifty, it might be a bit tough to outperform. So, all in all, a decent week for the bulls. All right, a decent week for the bulls and we have plenty to discuss with our guests. First up, we have Sanjeev Prasad, the Senior Executive Director and Co-Head at Kotak Institutional Equities who joins in. Sanjeev, hi. Uh, thanks for being with us on the show. Before I ask you about your view on the markets, I wanted your thoughts on uh, Reliance. The numbers look better than at least what, uh, you know, the street was expecting. What do you expect to see on the stock here on and how did you analyze the earnings? So the numbers seem to be in line with our estimates. Uh, you know, we were looking at about 73 uh, billion rupees, so it seems to be very much in line with our numbers, both at the bit level as also <coughs> at the net profit level. Seems to be slightly ahead of consensus numbers. So whatever you put out on the screen, I saw a number of 70 billion uh, as consensus estimates for net profit. So it seems to be definitely better than that. So you could see, you know, maybe uh, some uptick in the stock price on uh, on Monday. Uh, uh, having said that, I think investors generally seem to be, you know, uh, uh, expecting good things from this company over the next uh, 12 months or so, as and when you start seeing the commissioning of the new projects. So I assume, you know, over the next uh, uh, few months or so, people will start, you know, building in, you know, uh, uh, some uh, expectation into the stock price about, you know, higher contribution from the newer projects, which will come up, you know, over the next uh, six to nine, 12 months, you know, we'll see most of these projects, you know, starting to contribute. Uh, and if I look further down, as and when all these projects start contributing uh, fully to the EPS numbers, we are looking at somewhere about uh, 100 rupees EPS on a March 18 basis, adjusted for 20 shares, it will become about 110. So you could look at a stock, you know, which could be in the range of around 1200, 1300 rupees over the next uh, 12 to 15 months, as and when, you know, you see the full discounting of the, the new projects contributing to the company's uh, net profits. Sanjeev, hi. The other big talking point this week was the kind of rally that we had in ICICI Bank and State Bank of India, the, the two big dogs as far as this whole banking space is concerned. Do you think this, this, the, the street is getting a bit over-optimistic on uh, you know where we are right now in terms of the economy and the problems getting sorted? Or is this just a case of everything being good at a price and that's why you know seeing this kind of a rally? I think it's a combination of several things. One is the fact that in the very near term, you had this news, uh, which is still not confirmed by uh, anybody in the banking uh, system as yet, about the RBI being slightly more lenient about uh, some of the 150 companies which were originally circulated as part of the AQR exercise. Apparently, 20 large companies have been, at least for this quarter, left out. Uh, so maybe the uh, loan loss provision numbers for the March uh, 16 quarter numbers will not be as high as what the street had built in, into its estimates uh, for this quarter. So maybe that's a, a short term positive. Uh, on the more medium term thing, uh, you're absolutely right in the sense, you know, uh, the street has been expecting very dire things about the banking system in India. But uh, we had done a lot of bottom-up work on this in the 
couple of reports which were put out in March, and all our numbers suggested that it's not as bad a scenario as what people are assuming. You know, clearly the NPL numbers would be large. You know, in the range of around 16 to 18 percent was our estimate for the entire banking system. Having said that, our assumption is that the loss, the loss given default will not be that high as what the street is fearing. You know, somewhere about 40 to 50 percent. Our estimate it could be more like 30 percent, especially uh, given the fact that you are starting to see a lot of M&A transactions in the in the banking space in the sense, you know, you're seeing a lot of companies starting to sell their assets forced by the, I guess, a combination of, uh, you know, banks coming together and, I guess, pressure from the courts uh, plus the Minister of Finance and the RBI all acting in, in concert. So I don't think companies really have much option to start selling assets. Uh, so we were, you know, getting slightly more comfortable about the fact that the recovery could be a lot higher than what was earlier uh, expected. And of course, you know, uh, stocks had come down to levels where you know, people were effectively assuming that there would not be any growth in the book value of uh, uh, something like an ICIC bank for a very long time, which is obviously not going to be the, the case. So we took a positive call somewhere in early March, you know, and this, uh, for the timing it seems to have worked out well. Okay. What about the market itself, Sanjeev? What's the sense you're getting after the big run-up that we've seen uh, since the budget day? Is there more upside on the cards? See, in the near term, I would be a little bit concerned about the very steep run-up which has happened in a sense. A lot of good news has got uh, discounted very quickly. And clearly, we are fairly positive on the economic recovery now. You are seeing, you know, a reasonably good signs of economic recovery. Plus, as we go into the second half of this year, you know, also start seeing some contribution from the consumption side, led by 7 CPC commission payout, plus, you know, a more normal monsoon, all that result in discretionary consumption as also basic you know, staple consumption picking up uh, starting from let's say August to October uh, time frame. So I think the general economic uh, recovery thesis plus uh, uh, earnings recovery all that is uh, clearly valid. Having said that, the way the stocks run up, you know, a lot of things just get discounted very quickly in India and the fact is if you look at valuations of the Nifty 50 index, for example, the market is already trading at about 17 and a half times on a March 17 basis, and this is based on about 15% earnings growth which we have for the Nifty 50 index. So in a way, you know, March 17 numbers are more or less fully discounted. So now you have to, you know, roll forward to March 18, which I think is still some time. Okay, so I would, you know, not get overly excited about uh, this run-up. The one thing which bothers me about the run-up is, you know, this has come on the back of uh, a lot of. Uh, I wouldn't say really positive changes in the global environment, but you know, uh, it seems to be more driven by a macro trade which is resulting from expectations of uh, the market about US dollar weakness continuing for a fairly long time. And that is something which I would be a bit careful about. Uh, you know, this whole rally started effectively from the middle of Fed, when you had the first indication from the Fed that it will not raise uh, rates in the US in a big hurry. So effectively that resulted in a huge US dollar carry trade. Effectively, people are basically short dollar and effectively long everything else. So you had a commodity rally on the back of that. You had emerging markets seeing massive inflows uh, uh, on the back of you know uh, this, this assessment. Uh, but I think going forward, you know, US is probably one of the very few large economies which is showing some signs of growth and inflation at the same time. So this assumption with the market has you know more or less built in now that you know the US Fed will not act for a Reasonably long time, I would be a bit careful about that. If you see two or three strong data points in the U.S. on both labor and inflation, or either of those uh, two, certainly the whole thing could reverse, and you know people will again start fearing a, a U.S. Fed rate increase to the detriment of you know all the other emerging markets and the riskier assets like uh, commodities, because people will start immediately building in a U.S. currency strengthening, and you know the whole uh, thesis which we have seen so far in the last two months could. Uh, Reverse. Uh, just to give you some flow statistics, in the month of uh, January uh, 2016, the net outflows from the six Asian markets, which give daily you know inflow for numbers for uh, foreign investors, that was about six billion dollars net outflow. In the month of March, it has become a positive 13 billion dollar inflow. So that's the you know shift in sentiment which has happened just based on this uh, U.S. dollar carry trade. So, you know, and a lot of this money is effectively coming from ETF. So that's a big worry that if some of this uh, expectation about the U.S. dollar itself changes, you know, then this whole emerging market rate, you know, could reverse to some extent. India would do well in that kind of scenario because we have, you know, domestic factors which are quite positive. But, you know, you can't withstand a tide of money which will eventually go out if you uh, 
see some signs of US dollar strengthening once again. Oh yes, can't fight the money. I mean, that, that's something that we found out over the last two months or so, and that's the big risk. Uh, but Sanjeev, before we thank you, just a word on Infosys as well. Uh, uh, it was a good week for Infosys after its numbers, uh, but do you think most of the good news is, is in the price? It's outperformed TCS by a huge margin uh, over the last 12 months, uh, or do you think the outperformance is done, or do you expect it to remain sector leader for now? Uh, from a pure technology perspective, I think uh, the leadership has moved on to Infosys looks like in terms of growth. If you look at the kind of uh, guidance Infosys given, seems to be well ahead of you know what others uh, look at this point of time of uh, delivering. So if that is the case, uh, then I think the, the rating which has happened in the case of Infosys stock will probably uh, sustain. And uh, the multiples will you know remain at you know the current high levels, which means effectively even if the stock is you know uh, or the, the company is delivering something like you know 12, 13 percent earnings growth, which is what we are looking at over the next two years, you know the stock probably gives you that kind of uh, return. So I think the relating story has largely happened on the back of uh, and I would say three, four quarters of very uh, good numbers that turn around in the company, which has been brought about by Dr. Uh, Sikka. So the market is actually rewarding uh, Infosys for, uh, for that turnaround. And if you look at the multiples of Infosys and TCS now, more or less they have converged about, you know, 18 times uh, on a March uh, 17 basis. So I think that rating is done, but the company will still continue to grow simply on the back of earnings growth. Okay, Sanjeev, so we leave it at that. Thanks for joining us and giving us your view on the markets. That's the word coming in from Kotak, but we are not done with market opinion just yet. We'll take a break. In the meantime, listen in to some market opinion that we heard through the course of the week. And when we come back, we will have Rajat Rajgarya of Motilal Oswal with us. It seems that, um, you know, the, the, over the medium term, the rally may continue for longer. The only concern that I have is over the very near term because valuations, particularly in relation to emerging market or Asia X Japan, are again beginning to look slightly on the higher side. It's about one standard deviation higher than the long term average. So in the very near term, the market may take a breather here. But over the medium to longer term, our bullishness stays intact. In fact, you know, on your channel, I had commented that we have a target of 29,000 on the Sensex by the end of 2016. And there's no reason to change that target now. Stock market returns here on may well mirror, um, you know, the corporate tilt, especially if uh, healing in, in corporate sector balance sheets. Um, correction in the policy framework for addressing bad loans in the corporate sector uh, plays out and 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 uh, government policy and the macros uh, are, are constructive uh, i think there could be a very big delta here on i think we'd probably get into more a, a consolidation phase um, i don't think uh, you know the earnings growth is going to be so substantial at the aggregate level of course there could be individual companies individual sectors which could do very well but i think on a very aggregate basis it's unlikely that at least for the next two quarters we will get into double digit growth very short term perspective i think levels above 8000 are unlikely to kind of you know sustain itself and you'd probably re remain in this range of 7 to 8000 it's good if it consolidates here uh, i think that will build this very very strong uh, base for this market to start performing from H2 onwards. Market will consolidate here. Overall environment looks good. Uh, I think now we have some more global uncertainty coming in, in the next month, like VX rate, and you know, again, we we'll start seeing how many rates Fed is going to do in the over next course of next year. So I think global environment has settled down, but you know, are they, uh, when the problems are over? I don't think so. so I think as long as there is no major volatility in the global markets, India will continue to do well. Domestically, we are seeing definitely green shoots. Domestic economy is improving, uh, you know, uh, demand is improving. So I think all those things will start trickling down in the corporate earnings in the next couple of quarters. So I think, uh, you know, uh, markets are, you know, after having such a large value, you might see some sort of consolidation. But, uh, you know, uh, overall markets are on a good trajectory.